All right, so let's catch up from where we were last time, right? All right, so the uh, I want to show you just a better way to get an idea, like how to isolate the pump. So the the pump itself is the failure point, right? And uh, the how did I figure it out? How did I narrow it down, right? So if we take the belt out of the system, so this belt here turns the the power steering pump. You can hear the difference in the way the the pump when we turn it left and right, it was no longer, you know, it makes that sound, right? So I'll just let you, let you experience it. Can you uh, just turn it on? I'll be back. All right, I'll be here. Turn it right. All right, perfect. Turn it off. Okay, so so we have anytime you have like a system with moving parts, right? You you want to there, there are bearings that fail and pulleys, and you have belts. All these things can create that sound, right? And um, initially, the, my initial diagnosis was like those things are those common failure points for something like this. Uh, I heard, I've heard it before on like uh, multiple cars and it was always like the belts that were like slipping and stuff and then we also had some oil that was dropping down on it so all those things were kind of like oh, okay cool the 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 pulley that the idler pulley did it was failing so that was something that was happening in the vehicle at the time so that was replaced you saw earlier on and uh, what we're gonna do and I'm gonna show you how to how to diagnose this pump right here so you can see what's happening in regards to how you can tell that that's the source of the failure. So we're gonna pop this bolt out right here. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. And, uh, it's a little hard to see, but right here. Now this is gonna be the, uh, we're gonna take it all the way, but what it does, it just allows for you to adjust the tension. So it's a tensioner, tensioner bolt. So loosen that up, right? So we're gonna get the tension off of the belt. All right, so that's loose. And then we're gonna go underneath and uh, crack the other bolt. That's the source of the failure. So we're gonna pop this bolt out right here. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. And, uh, it's a little hard to see, but right here. Now this is gonna be the, uh, we're gonna take it all the way, but what it does, it just allows for you to adjust the tension. So it's a tensioner, tensioner bolt. So loosen that up, right? Because we're gonna get the tension off of the belt. All right, so that's loose. And then we're gonna go underneath and uh, crack the other bolt. These bolts here, we're gonna pull off that one here. And then there's another one right here. And there's another one all the way underneath here, up front. So we pull those down and then drop the splash guard out. So right here, we gotta get that 12, I mean, so that's a 14 mil. Just need to crack that loose. Like that. All right, so with both of these loose, right, the uh, pump is gonna be free, so you can go like this. Just go like that. And that takes the tension off the belt, right? And then we're gonna lift the belt off, right? I don't know if we can do it with one hand, but you get the idea. Lift the belt off, I'll show you. All right, so you can see this belt now for the power steering pump is free, right? We're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you uh, what I did to isolate this. So now the pump is not gonna turn anymore. So it's not turning anymore, right? That means it's not gonna generate any pressure because it's not getting any assistance from the, the crank. So with this isolated, you can now go ahead and test to see what it sounds like when we turn the car left and right, and that isolates this pump by itself. So can you start the car for me, please? All right, now I'm just hovering with this tool in the way here, so don't put your hand down there. All right, great. Turn to the left. See, you don't hear anything, right? Turn to the right. Perfect, thank you. All right, cool. So that's it right there. That's how the system was isolated. That's how we 
know for sure that the pump is the uh, the source of the failure. So again, for safety, don't put your hands down there. Just put something in there, hold the belt up. Okay? All right, let's take this pump off and get this uh, replaced. All right, I wanna show you what we need to crack, right? So we have, uh, we have this top hose right here. All right, we're gonna loosen that, slide that down. And then right here, right there, this right here, that is a 22 millimeter, 22 millimeter bolt that holds the bottom hose in. I'll show you from underneath. It's coming in right here. All right, look up right here. Do you see that? What do you see? Yeah, all right. There you go. Right here, that, right there. We're gonna pull that off. That's a 22 millimeter. All right, so this, this 22 millimeter right here is a little tricky to get at. Right there, sorry. And uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the hose from here. Instead of taking it, disconnected from there, I'm gonna disconnect it from right here. Can you see? Right up, right here. All right. That's on this right here. It's on this metal. Uh, I don't know what you can see, but anyway, we're gonna disconnect this hose. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I can see what you see. Disconnect from there so we can get some space so we can get a 22 millimeter socket on there. Okay. So what I like to do, right, I like to take a little bit of silicone spray, not a sponsor, right, and uh, spray right around the clamp like that so that way I can turn it it's a little easier to, to, to turn so I'm using this to try to reach down in there and turn it it's gonna get a little messy so you want to start to before you actually proceed you want to catch some of this power steering fluid it's gonna get everywhere and to do that uh, I'm gonna use my uh, first I'm gonna use my extractor to get the fluid out of the uh, power steering Pump reservoir. Okay. Right. So I'm just uh, extracting as much of this as possible, right? And then I'm going to discard of it. So you can tell this fluid needs to be replaced every couple hundred thousand miles. I mean. I think it's like 50,000 miles. See how dark that is? So it's really, really contaminated at this point. Got our catch can underneath. All right, so these are hose, plant, hose clamp tools, right? Pliers. Uh, these are going to be really useful for like this. So, just going to reach down in there. Let's get all the stuff out of here. Okay. Right, so I'm going to reach down in here like this. I'm just going to work this back and forth like that. So we'll do that so we get that off. All right, so finally, right, we got it. So, so what we had to do, we had to get this uh, long wrench here, 22 millimeter socket. I got a story for you, I'll tell you after. But just turn that lefty loosey. Come on. All right, there you go. So now that's cracked free. Go ahead and loosen that up, and then we can get the reservoir and the tank out of there. Sorry, the pump. Out. All right, so let's pop this out. We're gonna get this bolt all the way out. Right there. Just get that all the way out. Okay. So. Watch. 
should be at right there. Okay. okay, that's that. Alright. Now we gotta do the same for this one here. Oops, sorry, you can't see. Right, let's get that one also all the way out. Okay? What I'm talking about? Right here? Yeah, maybe that's a better shot. Right here, this one. Okay. Alright, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. All the bolts are loose. Alright. There you go, that's it. That's our power steering pump right there. All right, so we need to transfer some parts from the uh, old pump to the new pump. All right, so before you do, you want to dust double check, make sure it's the same pump. All right, we're good. So I'm gonna pop that off a uh, 17 millimeter. So. Yep, so the pulley is a 17 millimeter. So pop that off. So that's that, right? Um, it does have an orientation, so the flat parts on the outside. These bracket bolts here have to come off, so we have, okay, three bolts. Looks like this is some kind of retainer on this one here. Okay, got it. So let's pop these off. Looks like a 12 mil. No, that's a 12. Yeah, that's a 12. Right, so that's that. There. This looks like 14s. It's a 10 mil. All right, so Tighten that by hand. 
that is that's the orientation of it is because the larger bolt goes right through and, and screws into the back of that so it's good and just get these started by hand How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Well, almost. I'm in the reverse, so we're in the good part. We're putting it back together. Are you recording right now? Yeah, yeah. Alright. So, anyway. So we have these two uh, 14s right here. That's uh, <laughs> a great job. Someone's going to do it. Are you okay? I am. This guy's got my computer. I was wondering if I could borrow it. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> Alright, so here we are. So we're just gonna tighten it up. Alright, so that's that. Okay, get that 12 mil on there. I'm gonna put this hose on. silicone spray it's gonna make this going a lot easier thank you all right so we're right here all right so that's that That's that clamp. Now we need to. This part of the. This part is on the actually on the other part of the car, so we have to get that off. It's a little different from this side. Okay. All right. I gotta. I gotta get this bolt out. But the problem is this is spinning from the back side, right? This is part of the power steering pump, the new one. I don't need this part, so. I need to, you'll see, watch. So, as I turn this, right, that whole thing is turning. So, I gotta get a uh, 24 millimeter on this side here, right, like that. I wanna turn in the opposite direction, like this, just to try to break it free. There we go. 
That's the sound of a mangasm. Uh, all right, so. Now there's two washers, two crush washers. On this, uh, there's one here on this side. What's that? And there's another one on the other side. So, looks like that. Sorry. Like that. Okay. We get the pulley on. So the pulley is... Uh, remember the flat side goes out. So... So that, that, there's a little bit of rust inside of here. Make it a little difficult to get on. Let's see if we can just kind of tap it on. With, uh, we'll lubricate it first. But you want to get it on so that way it's flat with the uh, with the back. So put a socket on here and just kind of tap it down. That's it. So it's flat back here. Not flat all the way, but it's 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 you'll see it. It's gonna get really close to the edge underneath in the back. And we're gonna put the, uh, the 17 millimeter bolt on here. So started by hand. That's it. So remember when we started at first, this bolt was flush with the top of this. That's how you know that this pulley is seated all the way down. So make sure that the bolt here is flat, flush, okay? So I'm hoping you can kind of see this. So I put the top bolt in on the bracket just to kind of hold the power steering pump there. And this here, right, is what we need to get this orientation right. So we have bolt, crush washer. Get new crush washers if you can. We're gonna try to reuse this. Hopefully it doesn't leak. And then we need another uh, crush washer on the outside, like this. Like that. And then we screw them into the power steering pump. It started by hand. There's not much you're gonna see because I can't get you in here really well, but you get an idea of what's going on. How's my shoulder? I've been doing a lot of work. Hey, what's up, bro? I already dropped the crush washer, but you get the idea. I'm gonna struggle with this off camera. So at this point, I didn't really record the reverse all the way because uh, it's it's pretty straightforward. Just reverse what I what we just did, and then uh, now we gotta purge the system. So I had I filled up the uh, system with uh, power steering fluid, and we need to get all the air out of the system. So you're gonna hear some squeaking sounds, but the squeakings will disappear as the air goes out. So to do that, you turn the car on, you turn it all the way to the left can't go anymore all the way to the right can't go anymore you just keep going back and forth 
and then uh, right now as you can see the fluid is filled up to the top that's that's gonna drop down a little bit as it fills up and the air goes out so can you uh, do it for me thank you Got so it. much yeah we're purging You can see there's no more sound. Keep going, left and right. You see the bubble right there? That's good. And that's, that's the air getting into the Sorry, you couldn't even hear anything. You uh, so you can see how the air bubbles were coming out of the uh, the fluid. The fluid dropped down, and then it got quiet. You were no longer hearing that squ squeeching sound because the uh, the pump was a, was a source of the failure. And um, at this point, we just want to try to like top off the uh, the fluid, power steering pump fluid, and just make sure that the um, uh, the system it doesn't have any leaks. So you're gonna check the hoses back here. That hose again. When you do this job, I would recommend you uh, get not recommend you should get those two crush washers. Uh, there's two of them. Replace both of those, and then if you're really concerned, I would also get that uh, that hose back there just to just in case anything happens to the hose while you're doing it. And uh, other than that, the crush washers would just be enough. It's pretty straightforward repair, pretty easy. Uh, yeah. All right, if you like the video, go ahead and say a uh, thumbs up. Uh, if there's something else that we could have done better, let me know. And uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks. All right, I want to talk about something real annoying that happened, right, with this job. So when I took the belts off, right, I had to get the alternator out of the way. This connector right here is, uh, it's really super brittle, the plastic, so over time, you have to just pay attention to it. it. It'll break on you, right? And when it breaks on you, it'll, it won't seat properly in the alternator and then the alternator won't charge the system while it's running. It'll kill your battery. So it's such a common failure that if you get on eBay or, 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 um, or uh, Amazon, you can actually see the connector. People are selling these connectors all the time. So it's this connector here. I had to go to the uh, junkyard and uh, I pulled it, I think we pulled it off of like a, like a uh, 2000, was it was a Camry? It's a Camry. Yeah, it was a Camry. So it was a Camry. This is a, this is a typical design for like Toyotas from like, uh, I guess the late 90s to the early 2000s. They have three, a three wire, three wires coming into the alternator. And this one is a control wire. So this one must go to the computer and uh, the computer needs to know something to help, to, to tell it to charge the system that's my estimate guesstimate on what i think is going on but anyway we put it back on and then everything went everything is fine now so we're good to go so just pay attention to that and be careful of that plug because you know it, it breaks it's, it's brittle it's old all right hello everybody welcome how you doing all right so today we got a really interesting problem uh, we have a, um, a Toyota Corolla 1996, Six. and uh, my friend, <laughs> she came to me asking me about the sound she was hearing when she returned, and uh, I have a feeling it's a pretty it's a pretty straightforward repair because I've I've seen this failure before, but um, so this car has three belts. Uh, this is going to be the water pump right here. That's the uh, power steering pump right here and and then there's another belt here that kind of drives the AC compressor which is like right here at the bottom right so there's three belts in this car and uh, you notice that I put some arrows 
right here on the belts. So what we're gonna do is replace all these belts and the tensioner. I have a, I have a strong feeling the tensioner is failing also because there's a sound. So I'm gonna show you the diagnostic process. Uh, I'll have, I'll have uh, the car be turned on and then we're gonna listen for when the, when the car turns left or right on the steering wheel, you hear a squeaking sound that comes out. And that's, there's a couple things that's happening. One of three things, right? The belt itself is slipping. These belts are pretty old. They've never been replaced. You can see how old they are. Uh, two, uh, and just to let you know, you, if you look closely, you can, can see that there's oil right here. If you look up right here, you see that line? This line right here indicates that the oil is dripping on the belt and it's it, it's being splashed up from here to here. So that's one thing you can look out for, that line right there. And uh, what happens is like with oil on belts, it creates slipping and it decays the belts. So you, if you have an oil leak like this, this is, probably, this is from the, uh, the head gasket right here, I mean the valve cover gasket, you're gonna have to replace that because it just keeps on leaking oil on the belt. And then that causes the belt to slip, that causes the belt to decay that wears away. There's an idler pulley, which is like uh, right, uh, right over, uh, it's right there. It's hard to see, but it's this right here. That's the idler pulley, that one right there. That one, you gotta replace it every couple, like maybe like 70,000 miles. This car is, it's over 200,000, right? Yeah, this, this car's over 200,000 miles, and uh, so that that pulley there will wobble as it fails. So what happens, right, when you turn the steering wheel, the first thing I asked was, uh, is it difficult to turn? Uh, the reason why I asked that, because that would give me an indicator that, like, the system itself, the hydraulics, is not functional. It's leaking in the hydraulic system. The answer is no. So immediately I know, like, okay, it's not... It's not the air. It's not the uh, power steering fluid leaking out of the system itself. that's causing the, the, the squeaking sound when they when the when the client turns. So what I did notice, right, was uh, when you turn, right, and you'll see it. It idles, but you, you hear the sound goes up. The reason why it's because more pressure is needed when you have a power steering pump functioning to turn a wheel. As the pressure increases, increases more tension on the belts themselves, right? So the belts need more pressure, um, more more tension to like turn the pump because it needs more power, to more work effort, you know, whatever you want to talk, more circular momentum to try to like drive the uh, the pump itself, the, push the fluids around, and that was my indicator that like okay, we have a typical failure of like belt or and or um, idler, idler pulley. So we're gonna get, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that sounds like right now. All right, turn to the right. Back there, turn to the left. Turn to the right. Awesome, thank you. Turn off, thank you. All right. So you hear that change in the high pitch sound? That sound right there is an indicator that when you get load on the system, that it taxes the belts, and that's why I'm pretty sure that the belt and the uh, idler pulley are gonna be the source of failure on this. And you wanna replace them just because of the structure of the system. If any of those belts fail, right, what you're gonna have happen is if this belt fails back here, your water pump's gonna, going to cease to fail, cease to turn, it's not gonna pump any coolant through the engine, in less than 20 minutes of driving, your engine's gonna seize up, okay? So you gotta replace that. If this belt fails, this is your alternator belt, your car will stop working because there's no more power. Um, the system won't be able to charge itself, so the battery will die, and your car will just cease to work. Um, the bottom belt, that's the least concern in one out of all of them, because it's just the uh, AC compressor. You just won't have AC, so either way, that's, what, that's where you gotta replace this, as soon as you hear that sound.
Alright, so this is the uh, tensioner. Let's so just loosen that up. So right there, loosen that up. And then over here, you gotta crack that bolt. That's on the idler pulley. This one right here. And then that should slide right off like that. That's the second belt. See, I labeled it, and I put arrows. Do that in case you need to put the belt back on. You can see here, right, this bolt, just loosen it, just loosen it up. You don't have to take it out, and then, uh, oh, no, 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 I was telling you, YouTubers, and then, uh, oh, for you too, right, and then uh, I loosened uh, this bolt up, this is the tensioner bolt, you don't have to take it out, and you can see here, now you can pull on this, you see how the belt is loose, see that? So that just slides, and you can just take the belt off. So this is going to be a little tricky, right? You got to create tension, and you got to push against something hard. You don't want to push against any, anything uh, soft. Let's say like uh, plastic connectors and stuff. So I'm going to show you what I what I recommend. So I'm getting you a little bit of light. Okay. So I'm using this extension. You can use a pry bar that works also, and. Uh, this is a 15 inch, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide it in right here, like that, and I'm going to push down against the back of the bolt right there, like this, so I'm going to go like, like here, okay, and as I push down against it like that, I'm going to tighten it up with that at the same time, okay, so that's how you want to get the tension on the belt. So I want to talk about how can you tell when you have bad belts, right? Okay, so this is the old belt. This is the new belt, all right? When you look at, when you look for, when you, you want to flip the belt like this, just kind of press it together and you'll look for cracks on the belt like that. If you don't see any cracks, you're good, right? Now, the thickness of these grooves are important. So they wear down over time, right? So if you look at, look at this belt here, if you look down at them here, right? So here's the new one, right? and here's the old one. The depth between here is gonna be a little higher. This one has a little different style, right? It's a much thicker depth than this one here. So that's another thing you wanna look out for. So the depth is another thing. When you replace your belts, you wanna make sure they're the same length. I can't do it with one hand, but you just pull on it and make sure that they both are the same diameter, okay? And uh, when you install them, I like to follow this pattern. So, okay. so this is going to be the second belt, right? So what I do, I like to put the words to the left side, uh, to this side. I, I, you know, just follow a rule. Be consistent, you know, so I can read it looking down like this. So that's 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 the pattern I go for, and it's facing that way towards the. Uh, Passenger side America, okay? All right, so it's also a good time to inspect stuff. So I, I looked at the, the uh, connector for the alternator and it's a little greenish, <laughs> a little pussy. So I'm gonna clean that off with, uh, with this stuff here. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Got it, Deoxit D5. Improves electronic connection. So that's what I'm gonna use to spray that out. And just make sure that you, uh, so that way you don't have any high resistance or anything weird going on. Okay, all right, so we have like, I want to show you this. This is important. See, so you, you see how this is set up right here? You see the, the witness marks? So this has to go into here like this. This is going to be the tensioner like this, okay? So make sure this screws in like this. Don't flip it upside down like that. Flip it just like that all right we're gonna try to start this i had the battery disconnected all right go for it let's see fired up we're gonna try to start this i had the battery disconnected all right go for it let's see 
fired up. 